the first film is is about this doomed relationship and the second film is is about the aftermath but for a film that's kind of you know about julie dealing with grief it's really joyful you know there's so much kind of um happiness in the film that was always my intention that, that and that which is why i thought well part two or part one can't exist on its own because it's uh, the joy is yet to come, and the sort of opening out is yet to come. So that 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 was that was always in my mind. Even in my notes in my diary in 1988, I felt that the second part would be something, would be a processing, would be a, a sort of coming to terms with something. It's funny how sometimes uh, you have a plan and you don't realise um, it's it's that clear. But um, I. I really wanted to shoot this at the same time as part one, and it wasn't possible because we couldn't raise the money to shoot them back to back. And I was worried also because maybe um, uh, if I didn't shoot them together, they they wouldn't happen. And and I I always felt that part one could not exist without part two. It needed a response. It needed a reflection of itself in some way. It 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 wasn't enough that it should end. Um, at the end of the relationship at, of part one, um, that uh, I wanted this creative response to to that story. So um, we weren't able to shoot them together. And there was a year, maybe even two years in between, uh, shooting one and two. And anyway, I, I'm 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 always very happy when they're um, shown together. In a way, I know you've only just seen part two, but maybe some of you have seen part one. I want to talk a bit about that gap and whether it changed anything because you know you you said just now you first envisioned this film or began to kind of grow it in your mind in in 1988 so it's had a long time to gestate um and I I, I want to know whether that extra kind of two-year period of, of waiting um changed anything uh, well, it did in a way that I couldn't have imagined. Um, I uh, yes, I, as I said, I thought they needed to be shot together, otherwise part two wouldn't happen. But in the end, I had so many new ideas um, that went into this that I didn't have originally. And um, I was saying earlier, in fact, that this the film that you've just seen, a lot of it's fictional. It didn't happen to me. I didn't make a film based on this relationship that I had. That was something that I imagined uh, in that two year period, in fact. So there were many, so many ideas that came about in that time and even in the time that we were shooting this. So they were, it was, uh, you know, I realize now sitting here now that it was four years, at least four years of making these two films and uh, constantly evolving, constantly changing. And now they seem like, well, they were always like that, but they weren't, you know, they, they, they changed a lot. The filmmaker Ari Aster, I don't know if you've read this trivia about yourself, Joanna, but uh, he described you uh, as a, a diarist of the best kind and uh, is really interested in the kind of minutia of the world that you've created. You and I have spoken about this before. You have described yourself as a, the kind of archivist of your family. Um, and you know somebody who kind of keeps all their diaries and journals. Um, you're laughing, I think, because your sister's in the well, room. I'm looking at my sister who's in the audience. Yeah, and, and she she knows this about you. Um, but I, I'm wondering if you can kind of talk a little bit about your process of going back through um, those kind of old documents and photos and that memorabilia, because you know. Some you write some of this is fictional, but a lot of it is pulled from your real life. And I, I'm curious to know a bit more about how you were able to kind of recall those things and recall those details. Wow, it's such a complex process, isn't it? I, I, I mean, I'm saying that because I'm sure there are people out here who who create work or you know in different ways, whether they make films or they write books or do something creative. It's uh, it's very hard to pull it apart, but. A lot of the process of uh, making both films was looking back and, and fortunately I had written down experiences of certain points in my life. Uh, I sort of recorded even films that I saw or just things that, hap that happened to me. And I did find that, it's not that I find my life inspiring, I really don't in many ways, but I, but I found uh, I could sort of see myself almost like a sort of out of body experience of sort of seeing this young woman 
and what she was going through and and the sort of adventure she was going through and so I could I could draw from that and also yes talking of the films that I saw back then so those films were had sort of imprinted themselves on me so they were, sort of became part of me so it's not just about one person's experience but it's just about how life yes is is, is sort of reflected around us I, it, it, it's it's really hard to describe that process but it, it it it's one that takes despite not writing a conventional script for my films i spend many months even years uh, working through these ideas looking back not just on my own life but on other people's lives and just observations so it, it's yeah it's a it's a complex thing in a way something that um that i wanted to ask you sort of relates to uh, another q a that we did a couple of years ago when somebody uh, who knew you around the time um, in the 80s turned up to the Q&A and, uh, and they were here. And I'm just interested to know if kind of making this film about your past has um, activated or sort of reactivated any old connections, if people have drifted into your life that you might have lost touch with uh, after seeing the film. Yeah, well, that was a particular experience. I would sort of, in a way, you saying that makes me think, well, I should have invited this friend to the screening. Maybe she's even here, I don't know. Uh, but there is a responsibility because the, there's a, the, the, that point in one's life is not just, you're, you're not just on your own in that stage of your life. There are other people that are, that are experiencing different aspects of that at the same time. So I feel with these films, even though some of it is fictional, there are elements of it that do connect with other people's lives. So I, yes, I, I, I don't know how to, uh, but I, I, you know, there are certain people I think, well, I wonder what they're think, going to think of this. I wonder if they'll think, well, no, I didn't see it like that. I saw it another way or I saw him in a different way or, yeah. One character that um, I understand is a kind of composite of people that you knew rather than a kind of directly inspired by one particular person is Patrick, the Richard Iordo character, who uh, seems to be the embodiment of all the worst male filmmakers you've ever met. Um, can you talk a little bit about the inspiration behind that? And um, then can I offer my own theory? as well that <laughs> maybe <laughs> that maybe he represents um kind of julie's shadow side you know a bit of her own ego and or, or perhaps you know some of your own kind of ambitions and more kind of confident side um well that that's really um yeah i didn't know you were going to say that and that's really interesting because that is exactly what i felt because although he, he is drawn from different uh, directors, not just male actually, but and not just British either, different directors. And, and with Richard, we did a lot of research. We looked at interviews with different directors and tried to sort of understand the sort of ego of a director. And I had a very big ego when I was at film school. I thought I was going to make blockbuster films. I was going to be the next Spielberg or something when I left film school. And it was very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> because that clearly didn't happen. And I went into television, I started directing soap operas. So it was, it was really, um, it, it was interesting looking at, uh, yes, at somebody who, who has this opinion of themselves. And yeah, I think uh, in your twenties, or I certainly in my twenties had this sort of, yeah, this, this feeling of, uh, yeah, um, the world is my oyster and I can do what I want. And then, you know, slowly you become disappointed and, things don't work out the way you thought. Well, I hadn't necessarily read it that way. And then I, I read an interview you did with um, Robbie Collin in, in Telegraph the other day, and you mentioned the film One from the Heart uh -huh. uh, as uh, something that you had maybe hoped that you might make your kind of riff on one day. And I, I thought, you know, well, Patrick's film is a big, splashy musical. Um, so, yeah, I wondered if that was a bit, a bit of you in that as well. Definitely, but I haven't done that thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I think one of the things that is so kind of um, interesting and dynamic about this film is that you get to kind of see you as a filmmaker playing with these different modes of filmmaking. Um, you know, you're known for a certain type of movie. And in this film, you get to see a little bit more of your range and your interests and there's a sort of playfulness there. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about 
um, recreating or creating Julie's grad film because I think anybody who has seen your grad film, Caprice, will notice some kind of similarities. Well, I think, well, uh, sort of connecting with what you've just said, I, I, I feel that I'm still learning and I'm still expanding in a way. And that then these ideas, whether they were sort of ego maniac ideas or, or not, I, the, the were, there were ideas of a sort of breadth of a sort of way of seeing cinema and and uh, and not being, uh, I'm going to sound like Julie, <laughs> but not being sort of rooted in reality, but something, or maybe rooted in reality, but expressing in, in more imaginative uh, theatrical ways. And I and and it was very exciting to me. Well, when I made Caprice, which was the the my graduate graduation film film school, I um I remember being a little bit disappointed because my well certainly my tutors at film school were very disappointed and I and then I sort of somehow followed their thinking and thought yes I haven't quite achieved that thing maybe I wasn't really telling a story there and so there was something unfinished anyway at that point in time in my mid-20s um, that I wanted to finish with this so what Julie does was which was something I could never have done at that time which was to take this real experience of hers and turn it into something, uh, turning turn it into some kind of cinema, some kind of imaginative experience. And so I, yes, I sort of was becoming a, a sort of film student in a way, or, or, or reliving that time and doing something contrary to what I did, which didn't have this sort of root in something real and, and a sort of real experience. It was something more fantastical she manages to do something that is based on something that she that's felt and that she's been through yet she's influenced by Powell and Pressburger and yeah it's um so it so in a way yeah it's sort of wishful thinking or something or maybe showing a way that I might go in the future I really I, I'd like to know sort of why now at this stage in your career um you know this was your fifth film so Stephen here is four and five, um, and you're you're not in your kind of twenties anymore. You've you've lived more life. You've accrued more experience, um, and so why you waited until now to kind of make such a personal film? Uh, I don't know because I think all the films have been personal, and I try not to dwell too much on the sort of. Num well, I'm actually, I'm a little obsessed with the number of films. <laughs> I think, well, God, I've got to get to 10, for God's sake. Uh, uh, but I, I um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I feel that I'm somehow, there's some connection with this past of mine and where where film school sort of ended and wasn't completely sad. I did sort of unfinished business or something, but I, I've never even thought about it like that until saying that to you now. But there's some, there's some circular thing of going back but then going forward with with everything that I've learned and I'm experiencing now as as uh, yeah someone older and and just further on. So it was life. a kind a kind of moment, the right moment to sort of take stock of what you had made up until this point. I mean, I don't think in a conscious kind of way, but but yeah, and I and I genuinely don't know where I'm going to go from now, actually. But um, I. I sort of, it, it, and it's an effort to do something of a sort of wider scale or bigger scale um, because it's quite scary. I mean, because the more money you have, the more sort of risk there is in a way. But yeah, I don't know how to put it. I mean, I, I really, yeah, it's just step by step. 